seems inevitable that Mario would have to transition over into the third dimension. If Mario and the Mushroom Kingdom could not transition over to the new axis, it could show cracks in Nintendo's red and blue plumber. Luckily, with the release of Super Mario 64 for the Nintendo 64, it showed that Mario was here to stay. This game has been seen and still is seen as one of the best 3D games and platformers ever made. Let's find out why many people finally look back towards this beloved game. After the release of the SNES and Super Mario World, people wondered what would be next for Mario and his pals. With the developers just tapping into the power of 3D with the Super FX chip on the SNES with games such as Star Fox and Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island, which showed the extensive possibilities of how 3D games could look like in the future. Some companies began testing the 3D graphics with a sort of pseudo 3D imaging technology called pre-rendered graphics. One such company was Rare and they game Donkey Kong Country. To briefly explain pre-rendered graphics on the SNES, it meant that the developers, like Rare, would create a very detailed 3D model of each character. Then using that model, they would take pictures of it. The pictures would then hold more detail than regular sprites as it would catch irregularities and features that normal sprites would usually not have. This picture would then look like it was using 3D graphics without the extra processing power. Now we can fast forward a little bit into the future where we are currently near the start of the fifth generation of consoles. A new company, Sony emerged into the gaming industry from a failed partnership with Nintendo, which led Sony to create the PlayStation. Sony finally gave Nintendo a run for its money and ended up beating Nintendo with the sheer amount of PlayStation sold. The PlayStation had been released a few years earlier and had gained a lot more support during this time. While Sony was bathing in cash, Nintendo was playing catch up. During this time, people did not know what Nintendo had up its sleeve. You see, during this period with the release of the PlayStation and Nintendo postponing their main console, Nintendo had launched a sort of pit stop of a console so they could place more resources into their main console, codenamed Project Reality. This pit stop of a console was soon released to the world, or more accurately to Japan, on July 21st, 1995, and North America on August 14th, 1995, as the Virtual Boy. This console soon became a commercial flop for Nintendo due to the headache-inducing red screens and the almost non-existent number of games on this console, which led Nintendo to discontinue it a year later in 1996. But this gave Nintendo enough time to release Project Reality, now named the Nintendo 64 or the N64 for short in Japan on June 23rd, 1996, and in North America on September 29th, 1996, and the rest of the world on March 1st, 1997. The Nintendo 64 was first released with two games, Pilot Wing 64 and Mario 64, the latter of which was Mario's first foray into the third dimension. Super Mario 64 was not created on the fly by Shigeru Miyamoto. Miyamoto had begun thinking about making a Mario game during the development of Star Fox for the SNES. The development of Super Mario 64 began in 1994 and concluded a little less than three years later in early 1996. The development team started to work on the new camera system. With a new degree of freedom, the team had a difficult time developing a good camera system. They tried multiple ways, including an isometric style of camera movement, similar to the one used in Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars. The development team soon landed on the idea of a free-roaming camera. Since a free-roaming camera was such a new concept to people, the team made the Lakitu, which would justify why the camera was moving on its own, independent of the player. Once this new camera system was finished, they began working on Mario's animation and movement. Miyamoto wanted Mario to be able to express more feelings using the increased power of the new 64-bit console. One of the first animation tests for Mario in this new 3D land was by testing the interaction of Mario and Mips the rabbit. Fun fact, MIPS was named after the microprocessor without interlocked pipeline stages, which was a processor used in the N64. Once the development of Mario was finished, they looked over how to build a world. The development team thought that they should make fewer levels, but make the levels larger and more open world. Or, they considered that they should make more linear levels, akin to that of the past 2D Mario games. They ended up with the former, creating fewer levels, but flushing out each level in the game. One problem for this was how to end the level. You see, they had a small problem. They didn't know what the goal of each level was. They soon made it so that if you receive a star, then the level would kick you out. The idea of finding a star instead of reaching a flagpole was to ask the player to explore the new worlds that were made instead of going from point A to point B in a straight line. With the development of the game finished, it was time to release. But first, we need to talk about the story of the game. Even though the story of Super Mario 64 was pretty basic, like its predecessors on the NES, the developers added a little bit more story to it. This time, Peach sent a letter to Mario asking for him to come to her castle to eat some cake that she baked. Once Mario gets to the castle, he realizes that Bowser used the power of the 120 stars to imprison Peach and her subjects in the castle. You being Mario must obtain all the stars by traveling through the painting in the castles, which will magically teleport you to other worlds. In these worlds, you must jump, kick, and punch your way to each of the 120 stars and save the princess from the evil King Bowser. 
The first time people were able to play Super Mario 64 was during the Nintendo Space World in 1995, which was like Nintendo's trade show event, sort of like E3. This was where multiple games were showcased, including a demo of Super Mario 64 and Nintendo's new console, previously named Nintendo Ultra 64. The console's name was soon changed right before the release, being named the Nintendo 64. During the Space World event, around 15 levels were finished. Miyamoto wanted more time to add more courses, as well as add more depth to the currently existing ones. So Miyamoto delayed the game till April 1996. Once the game was released, it was a smash hit. People loved the idea of an open world Mario game, where they can explore the new levels and find secrets and easter eggs that just couldn't be possible on Nintendo's past consoles. The game's open world and non-linearity allowed players to gain a bit of freedom. This game received critical acclaim from reviews and the public alike. It became the N64's best-selling game, and received many accolades and awards. But this game is not without its flaws. Some people noted the game's camera system was not as good as it was cracked up to be. Some people found it to be a bit uncomfortable to use. Still, this game is seen fondly to other people, including Nintendo, seeing as they remade it on their, at the time, newest handheld, the Nintendo DS. They are also making an all-new 3D All-Stars of the game to show how truly revolutionary coming to the third dimension was for the franchise. As I previously mentioned, Super Mario 64 was remastered and released on the Nintendo DS. In short, this is a perfect way to recreate the beauty of the original N64 version of the game. Many people love the single player mode of the game for its big addition of adding the ability to play with multiple characters, which would allow for a unique way of playing the game. The character you play as in the game is Mario, Luigi, Wario, and Yoshi, the latter of which was teased as a bonus in the original N64 version, as you could only talk to him and not play or ride him in the original game. There was also the addition of hats and items, which would grant each character new abilities. The hats would allow the character to take on the characteristics of the hat that is being used. Character-specific items were also part of the game, as it allowed some characters to gain special abilities, like the ability to turn invisible for Luigi or the power to turn into metal for Wario. The game's graphics were also upgraded to use the current power of the DS. This game was pretty much developed only to show the power of the DS, as it shows how an N64 game could be played on a handheld system. This game was not without its flaws, though, as some people criticized the lack of an analog stick, as Mario was now locked into eight directions, unlike the full 360 of the N64. But overall, this is a great remaster to an already fantastic game. Super Mario 64 was one of the key reasons why the Nintendo 64 did so well. Even with this game, the N64 still suffered some poor design choices and ended in second place in the fifth generation of consoles getting beaten by the newest console in the market, Sony's PlayStation. One reason why the Nintendo 64 suffered was because of the console's controller. You see, some people believe that the controller was specifically designed for Super Mario 64, making it difficult for others to use the same controller layout. Also, the three prongs on the controller made it difficult to use. Like its predecessor on the NES, Super Mario 64 has been seen as revolutionary for 3D platformers and games in general. Even with Mario 64's wonky camera movement, it was still revolutionary in that it allowed the camera to be moved independently of the player's character. This can be seen when people use the Super Mario 64 type of style and formula to make other games such as Conker's Bad Fur Day and Donkey Kong 64, both fantastic games. A sequel to Super Mario 64 is being worked on by Miyamoto and would have used the Japan-only Nintendo 64 DD. This game was soon scrapped due to the commercial failure of the 64 DD and the game's development not progressing the way Miyamoto wanted. This became the only 3D Mario game on the console, with sequels coming on Nintendo's subsequent game consoles. We still see the impact of this game on Mario's newest 3D adventure on the Nintendo Switch with Super Mario Odyssey. From the beginning with the world exploration to the hidden secrets and easter egg. We see the effect Super Mario 64 had on the genre and the series as a whole. Super Mario 64 is a fantastic game, from the game mechanics to its style to the fact that it was one of the first games to do 3D platforming so well. Even though Super Mario 64 still had some of its drawbacks, it became a prime example of the future of Mario. This was an almost perfect transition into the third dimension. This has been the history of Super Mario 64 for the Nintendo 64. Happy birthday, Mario.